February House is the story of a group of colleagues and friends, artists, who lived together for a little more than a year, a year and a half, in a row house in Brooklyn Heights in 1940 and 1941. During which George Davis, a fiction editor at Harper's Bazaar, uh, brought together a coterie of brilliant artists, including Winston Huaden, the poet, Carson McCullers, the novelist, veteran Britain, the composer, and his partner Peter Pierce, the tenor, Gypsy Rose Lee, the striptease artist, Jim and Paul Bowles, both novelists. An experiment in communal living, a kind of utopian project um, that didn't work out very well in the end. You don't have to tell them that. Oh, <laughs> too late now. <laughs> Gabriel Kahane found the story by reading this amazing book by Cheryl Tippins, which is also called February House. I remember filing it away back then in 2005 or 2006 as an obvious idea for a musical. It was a source that offered an unbelievable amount of material, almost enough material for several musicals, if not um, uh, uh, hundreds. So we had to sift through uh, an enormous number of bold-faced names, let's say, of the early 1940s, uh, and in order to find our cast of characters to tell the story that, uh, that we wanted to tell. One of the impulses for working on this material was that we were still very much entrenched in the Iraq War when uh, I started thinking about the piece. And the piece, one of the themes that runs through it is the question of what, it, what is the responsibility of an artist during wartime, if there is any such responsibility. And the, the piece features prominently the poet, Mr. Nihuad, really wrestling with this question. In addition, I mean, what drew me to this story uh, thematically, I mean, I, even setting aside the, the thematics was just the, the fun of being a fly on the wall or imagining being a fly on the wall as a, as a writer, having that opportunity to imagine a sort of wild antics involving Gypsy Rose Lee and Peter Pierce getting into a fight about oatmeal or something like that. One of the unexpected joys of this piece was the way that the family narrative emerged unexpectedly. Although it's set in Brooklyn, it's also kind of a celebration of, you know, the artistic community that is New York City overall. I've always thought that the public theater is a kind of, um, you know, tent pole in the middle of the whole theater community that is uh, New York. And it has a wide embrace uh, in terms of inviting into the building a, a lot of different kinds of artists and different kinds of work. And also has a history of work that's politically engaged and tackles big questions and big ideas in a very theatrical way and hopefully in a very entertaining way. And I think, uh, I hope Fed House is part of that tradition of work at the public. The shadows in the pantry are a comfort kind of strange.